I was going to get uh, started here. Um, so hello, thank you for coming. Um, there's probably came here for the fusion of sensors and robots bit, but there's actually two parts to this uh, this session. Um, first part is uh, Fukunosan here. He's going to be talking about um, the fusion of sensor and robot, which is a blueprint that we've got under the Acrano um, LF Edge blue, um, umbrella. And the second part is uh, my part. I'm going to be talking about Edge for anybody, which you may have heard about in the keynote. Um, it's a introduction to this new Edge service enabling platform concept and blueprint for creating and supporting Edge services, such as the one that Kronosan is going to talk about, the robot basic architecture. So I'm going to pass it to Kronosan, and then I will talk when he's finished. Okay, uh, let me start by uh, fusion of sensor and robotics. Uh, let me just start b uh, by my self-introduction. Uh, my name is Haruhi Safkano. I'm working for Fujitsu and working on the business and architecture planning uh, about edge computing area. And now I am a member of the technical steering committee uh, in the LFH Akrena project, and I am leading uh, robot blueprint project in the Acreno, LFH Acreno. And I'd like to uh, thank the member of our communities, uh, Professor Shimizu and Jeff. Uh, Professor Shimizu is uh, working on the Lismaker University and he is expert of a robot hand R&D uh, using electronic devices. Uh, Jeff Brower is CEO of the Signalogic He's expert of the signal and image processing and al algorithm. Uh, the objective of uh, today's uh, presentation is to introduce our activity about robotics uh, in open communities. Uh, here is the outline of this presentation. Uh, first, I will explain about uh, uh, what is the industry five uh, and uh, secondary, uh, I will explain about the robot uh, challenges uh, which uh, robot faces in the Industry 5, and also the solution for these challenges. Uh, as a solution, I will uh, explain about the uh, soft -rich, soft, sensor-rich soft and effector system, and also the lightweight uh, automatic uh, speech recognition. And also, I will explain about the activity at the AHLFH Agrena project uh, to uh, promote our uh, this uh, solution in the open community and, and to enhance using the open community power. Uh, CPS robot blueprint family and also a robot basic architecture uh, based on the SSES blueprint. And finally, I will explain activity in the future. Yeah, this slide uh, indicates about history of industry uh, revolutions. As we know, Industry 1 uh, started in the uh, 800 uh, with the mechanization using water and the steam powers. And also Industry 2 uh, started in the 1900 uh, with the mass production using electronic power assembly line the Ford car assembly line is famous in America. And also, uh, 2000, uh, Industry 3 started uh, using the computer automated uh, production, uh, like uh, robots. And now, today is the Industry 4. Uh, cyber physical system uh, is the typical example. Uh, collecting data from the uh, physical world, like a robot and sensors, and uh, analyze in the cloud, and feedback to its findings to the real world is the uh, typical uh, cyber physical system. And also, now we are beginning of the Industry 5. Industry 5 have uh, two key attributes. Uh, one is the mass customization, and second is the uh, human-robot collaboration. Uh, mass customization is the not only uh, automated uh, using robot, but also uh, customization uh, according to the uh, consumer preference, like uh, Nike ID in the uh, sneaker uh, website. And also the human-robot uh, collaboration. Human-robot collaboration uh, 
uh, will uh, improve the complex task uh, which today only human can do by the robot. So as, as, as we uh, can see from this uh, key attribute, uh, robot plays important role in the realizing the industry five. We know robot play important role uh, in the realizing industry five. Uh, so uh, can we use today's robot in industry five? I think we can not. Uh, I will explain the reason uh, and its challenges in the next few slides. Uh, first, uh, let me compare uh, the requirement of the today's robot, today's robot and the robot industry five, in the industry five. Uh, when today's robot handles the object, uh, object is the standardized, the uniform, uh, and the same sizes and same form. And field circumstance around the robot uh, is always stable. For example, uh, position of this uh, object is the same. Therefore, the movement of uh, the robot is always uh, constant and the same. Uh, its program is uh, simple and the uh, same routine. Like these uh, car factories and uh, uh, LMX, uh, uh, Electronic devices factories is the typical example. On the other hand, uh, object for the industry five uh, will be diverse shapes and flexibility of functional properties uh, because the mass customization uh, will change the parts of the product uh, according to the consumer preference. Uh, in addition, uh, please imagine that a retail store uh, Little also have uh, many merchandises uh, which have the diverse shapes and the flexibility and the frictional uh, properties. And also the, the field circumstance is uh, ever changing. Uh, the prominent example is the agriculture. The ground is uneven and the weather is always changing which will uh, change the frictional properties due to the rain. So uh, in such industries, challenge for the robot will be the autonomous uh, handling control by robot itself. There are other challenges in industry five. Uh, let me compare where and how robot work. Uh, robot, today's robot and robot in the industry five. Today's robot uh, will, is isolated from the human uh, due to the safety, like, like these fences. And once human program the robot, robot will uh, play the same routine, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. On the other hand, robot in the industry five uh, will work with the human in the same field and the human ordered to the robot and robot act uh, flexibility by the human orders. So a uh, challenge uh, in industry five uh, will be the rapid communication with the human for the robot. We have the solution for previous two challenges uh, for the flexible, uh, for the autonomous uh, handling control by robot. Uh, we, let's make a university uh, develop and research uh, flexible robot handling for the various uh, object under various environment. Uh, named SSES, sensor rich soft and effective system. Uh, for the challenge to uh, rapid communication with human uh, signal logic uh, developed uh, reliable and low latency speech recognition. From next slide, I will explain these uh, solutions. First, I will explain about SACS for the uh, autonomous hand handling control. Uh, in this slide, I would like to explain how SSES is trying to solve the challenges uh, regarding the various object, uh, various circumstance. Uh, there are two uh, big approaches. One is the enhancement of the cognitive ability, and the second is the new mechanical. Uh, first two, enhancement of cognitive ability, SSES developed the sensor-rich 
uh, technology for multidimensional data acquisition, like this multi-sensor module, and also use AI IoT technology uh, with the uh, force and uh, contact uh, information by the robot, and also IoT maintenance and inspection technology. The second is a new mechanical uh, for the grab the grab the something. So, a flexible manipulator using the polymer materials and also using advanced 3D printing technology to uh, realize a complex form for the hand. You can watch a uh, demo video on the YouTube, YouTube website uh, like uh, these uh, dishwashers, remove dishwashers and uh, serve on the plate uh, dishwashing. Uh, in, the, in the video, uh, you can see the autonomous three uh, determine the robot position of the uh, object and the grab and control the grab. And about enhancement uh, cognitivity, cognitivity uh, we have developed the RCPS as the mechanism for uh, correcting and uh, analyzing sensor data in the SSES. Uh, and providing feedback. Uh, this slide is about, uh, explain about the RCPS. RCPS uh, stands for Reconstructable uh, Basic System for Cyber Physical System. RCPS enable you to construct and reconstruct uh, various system uh, easily and at low cost. Uh, RCPS, uh, there are uh, main, three main components. Uh, one is uh, uh, MSM, uh, PDH, uh, and Cloud. MSM uh, is much uh, sensor module, have uh, external interface, uh, and also onboard sensors. Uh, by the external interfaces, MSM are uh, input to the external sensor information, and also output to the uh, actuators uh, such like robot and motor, the valve, uh, to control it. And also uh, sending data uh, to the PDH, uh, it is the IoT gateway via the Bluetooth and LPWA and or wired. Uh, PDH is the physical data hub, it is the IoT gateway, uh, it have uh, several functions. Uh, adding location information uh, from the sensor data and also the timestamp and also add unit, for example, the meter by second and, and also the formatting, uh, sending data by uh, to that cloud uh, following the JSON format uh, to use the data uh, easily in the cloud and also diagonal, diagnose uh, the data from the sensor devices. Uh, and the cloud uh, have uh, uh, stored the data from the IoT gateway and also the analyze the data and the feedback to the uh, physical world. Uh, Fujitsu uh, have developed the basic uh, processing analyzing software uh, for the cloud. I will explain uh, later. This section uh, describes uh, signal logic uh, ASR to realize uh, rapid communication with the human. Signal logic developed the lightweight automatic speech recognition engine. Uh, this engine uh, recognizes urgent uh, safety command, voice command like uh, stop, robot stop, and also the operating commands like uh, uh, change mode. Signal logic ASR is lightweight. Uh, it only uh, less than the 50 watt uh, power consumption uh, and also no fun. And also uh, consume only one Atom CPU core, which is the Intel small CPU. Uh, even, it, even if it is the small, uh, it have enough vocabulary, 20 kilo word vocabulary on the one motherboard. And also uh, they have a noise removal function uh, to minimize the robot background noises, such as the uh, sub motors and the, on the wheel. So Signal Logic, uh, now uh, they are working on the 
uh, Roomba onboard ASR demonstration. So as you can see uh, from pictures that, that, uh, that this ASR uh, can work on the such a uh, small motherboard. So uh, Signalogic ASR accurately recognize voice command in the field regardless of the internet con connectivity because of the uh, on-premise edges uh, and also prioritize the human safety. And we're working on the open community uh, to publish our uh, solution as the open software stack uh, to make it easy uh, people implement uh, advanced robot and to advance this solution using community power. Next few slides, I would like to explain about our uh, activity in the co open community. Uh, we are working on the LFH Acrano project. Uh, LFH has the several uh, projects. Acrano is one of them. And the Acrano uh, community creates edge <laughs> computing use cases uh, and its uh, OSS stack uh, to realize the edge computing use cases. Uh, Fujitsu and Ritsumeikan and Signal Logic uh, publish SSCS, uh, RCPS, ASR as the uh, OSS stack, uh, robot blueprint OSS stack for everyone to use. We have already published the robot blueprint uh, in the Acrano project. Uh, in this slide, I will uh, introduce the summary. Uh, there are many uh, challenges and use cases uh, for the robot to apply many industries. Uh, so, uh, for example, the, how we simplify the teaching to the robot and also the uh, high-level cooperation among the uh, several robots. So this solution will be uh, a combination of the technology, uh, elemental technology. So this, therefore, the various companies need to uh, cooperate with each other. So we launched uh, CPS robot blueprint family on the Acrano. And now we are focusing on the one of the blueprint uh, robot basic architecture based on the SACS uh, for the uh, OSS stack uh, for the robot. Uh, this is our uh, robot basic architecture based on the SACS blueprint. Uh, this blueprint provides open software stack for correct data and analyze data and feedback to the robot control. We have already uh, released the uh, collecting data in the Acrane release six. Now we are working on the Acrane release seven. Uh, this will be the middle of the December this year. We will add the uh, analyzing data function. And in the release seven, we have received Acrane hours a blueprint of the year 2022. Uh, I'd like to uh, appreciate the uh, community member and their help about this uh, award. Uh, this is a detail of a uh, kind of uh, blueprint release seven, which we are now working. Uh, we will enhance uh, functionality, data processing, and data analysis. Uh, data processing and analysis that uh, depends on the various of the use cases. They have. So we will uh, release the basic uh, data processing and analysis software library to uh, analyze, uh, to realize the various of, variety of the use cases. And also we will add the signal logic ASR. So as, as I said before slide, data processing and analysis method differ depending on the use cases so uh, because the, we have the various kind of data, various patterns, uh, for example, we need to remove data uh, when robot is a standby, uh, such, such like that. So uh, we provide basic software function uh, library, uh, which accelerate implement 
implementation of data processing and analysis. For example, uh, split data and also the detect the peak and also uh, calculus and also FFT and the remove noises. And so, uh, please check. Uh, we will uh, we will release this document uh, on the current week page. Please check about that. So uh, in this slide, uh, I'd like to say last uh, say about uh, uh, our activity in the future. Uh, we will add the feedback pass uh, from the analyzing result to the uh, real world. Uh, but however, there is a difficulty in the interfaces uh, with uh, robot and robot arm. Uh, because there are various uh, kind of arm and hand depends on the use cases. Uh, some uh, hand uh, moving by the uh, torque motor and some hand moving by the air pressures. So it, it, there is a many variety. So we needed to absorb the uh, hardware this difference. So for I think loss two is the candidate of the solution. So we are looking for blueprint collaborator. So please feel free to contact us if you are interested. To end my presentation, I will sum up our uh, main point to solve uh, the challenges of today's robot. Uh, we fusion of robot and the sensors, and we published it uh, open community, uh, LFH Acreno, uh, to evolve the solutions. We are looking for the collaborators. Uh, thank you for listening today about my presentation. I will pass to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hello, uh, my name is Colin Peters. Um, I'd like to uh, describe to you a platform that we have been working on as a concept for a few months now. Um, the basic idea of the platform is uh, to make it easier to design services at the edge and including the edge. Um, hopefully so easy that almost anyone can do it, um, which is why this presentation is called Edge for Anybody. So um, first, let me briefly introduce myself. Um, so my name, uh, I already said my name. <laughs> that picture, by the way, that picture is uh, taken in Banff in Canada, um, which is not where I was born, but uh, Canada is the right country. It's, I wasn't born in Banff, but I am Canadian. Um, I'm a software engineer. Uh, I've been working at Fujitsu now for about 25 years, just a little bit less than 25 years, uh, mostly in embedded systems. Um, a lot of it was in networking, uh, sometimes in other areas. Um, in the last few years, I've done some work in IoT uh, and uh, gradually moved into this edge computing area. Um, of course, over the years, I've used a lot of open source, Linux all the time, and that kind of thing. But uh, I've also made a couple of contributions. Um, way back in 1996, when I was in university, I uh, came up with a way of building uh, Win Windows executables on using uh, GCC, and that became MingWin, which some people may have heard of. Um, I handed it off to other people. I'm no longer involved with it, but uh, I checked, and there's still people downloading it and still using it, so I'm pretty proud of that. Um, also, uh, I'm currently involved in Acreno, um, along with uh, Fukunosan here. Um, I'm a PTL on two projects. Uh, one is the Smart Data Transactions project, uh, Smart Data Transactions for Cyber Physical Systems, and the other one is Edge Service Enabling Platform, which is what this talk is about. So um, enough about me, let's talk about the edge. Um, so what I mean by the edge is uh, anything that has computing power close to the end user. So that can mean something like a personal computer, but uh, usually when we talk about the edge, we mean interaction with the physical um, world and uh, not just through UIs, but also sensors and uh, 
like devices like cameras and uh, plus uh, ways for the system to affect the physical world like robots um, as uh, Fukuna, <laughs> Fukuna san described and of course uh, today we also want to uh, connect our systems together so there's uh, we want to share data with other locations we want to analyze it with the powerful servers in the cloud we want to collect it in databases to get new in insights uh, so the edge is usually more than just one or two computers. It's the edge connected to other systems. Um, there's been a lot of activity and interest in uh, building services at the edge uh, for many reasons. Uh, sometimes you want to handle events in real time and you want to have uh, uh, feedback. Uh, you want to uh, bring back, <laughs> so you want to bring data into the computing, computing systems from the physical world and process it. Um, and uh, today everyone pretty much carries around a lot of computing power with them in their pockets um, and it's always connected to com communication networks and it's also possible to include tiny little uh, computers, small and cheap, low power computing devices and sensors almost anywhere in your house um, or on the street or in factories or in stores. So people naturally have a lot of ideas for things they want to do with this stuff which is great, the edge is great. Um, the problem is uh, there's almost too much stuff. It's complicated. Um, getting all the different moving parts to work together uh, from the edge up to the cloud is really daunting. It takes expertise with many technologies, some of which are still rapidly evolving. Um, no offense to any of these uh, examples I've picked for this slide, but uh, they're, they're all great technologies, but they all have learning curves. Um, and of course, there are way, way more technologies than it could fit on the slide. Um, so you might have an idea for a new service or uh, something that you want to put on the edge. And to get that service up and running, you're probably going to have to learn about containers and Docker and VMs and maybe Kubernetes and overlay networks and database technologies and monitoring tools and orchestration and network functions. And uh, maybe you have mobile technologies in there, you want to learn about 5G. And that's before you even get into the specific technologies for sensors, industrial commands, control systems, robots, and whatever you're connecting together at the edge. Um, or maybe you have an idea for a technology that you want to, uh, to uh, supply, like a sensor or a piece of cloud infrastructure that you think would be really good and useful at the edge. Um, for people creating new services. So you, but you need to put it together with the other pieces of an edge service and then make sure it plays nice with everyone and, and maybe have something to show people, uh, proof of concept, say this is how it works. And that's hard. So we looked at uh, the flow of planning from a, of a service uh, through the, uh, from from planning through design, deployment, and operation. Um, and at each stage, there are these interactions with the technologies uh, that require specialized knowledge, uh, expertise, uh, as shown in the center of the diagram here. And uh, at all of these points, these, the people creating the service have to go and they have to talk to the people who are creating the devices and the infrastructure and the tools. So the edge service enabling platform is, goes in the middle there. It's shown and it uh, contains a edge service catalog which provides reusable and extendable design patterns for people who want to create edge services. And these designs are created by combining system components, um, definitions which encapsulate the configuration of the components and their uh, connections to other components so that the deployment and operation of the design can be highly automated. And uh, the edge service creators, they use it um, as they plan the design and deploy and operate the services. And the platform makes it easy to find the service designs they need uh, to match their needs and to customize those designs and extend them as necessary. Uh, and on the other side, uh, the device and infrastructure providers um, use the platform to create a one-stop registry of all the parts that are needed for an edge service. 
and they can find new use cases for their service in the catalog and uh, include their components in these service designs uh, to use as proof of concepts or as demonstrations. So there are four principles that I want to go over uh, that I think will uh, help the edge service enabling platform address the complexity of creating edge services. And, and uh, they're shown here, the abs abstraction, interaction, automation, and community. First, abstraction. So abstraction is one of the basic ways we address com uh, complexity. It's grouping parts together or hiding in unnecessary detail without losing meaning. In the edge service enabling platform, we make use of abstraction by presenting edge service designs to the user with a level of complexity that they can control according to their, to their needs. For example, the picture on the left is a top level representation of a fairly simple edge service. Uh, there's all, there are several parts shown, but it's not like overwhelmingly com uh, complex. And uh, you can look at that the diagram and see the overall concept of the system. If the designer wants to examine the details of the system, they can open up each of the functional boxes uh, and they can look inside and look at the specifics of software and hardware that are used in the, in the system. And they can go even further and they can look at the uh, way the components are connected to each other and the flow of control and data through the system. The second uh, concept we're using is uh, one of interaction. Uh, in addition to easy to understand graphical interfaces, we want to enable the system to understand the user's intent uh, from natural language interactions and extract necessary information from data sheets and specifications. We hope to have a system which can make smart inferences and suggestions while carrying out a conversation with the user. For example, the system could suggest a set of potential edge service designs based on a few sentences describing what the service creator wants the service to do. Uh, another type of interaction would be uh, when the user modifies a service um, design, the system can pick up additional components that are required and suggest the components and their connections and their placement. Third is automation. Uh, automation is a, is a topic which has already had a lot of work, work done, it, done on it, and uh, we just want to build on what's already available and uh, not reinvent the wheel. So what the platform will do is it uh, supports components to automate their own deployment and their testing and operations like, like upgrades. And uh, eventually it should be possible for the, the platform to also uh, support developers as they are automating their components. Uh, the user interface for deploying and operating an edge service also needs to be simple. Um, of course, an expert can reach in for their knobs and levers that they need to, uh, to uh, fiddle with, but uh, by default, things should just work. Um, finally, one of, the, um, under, uh, one of the basic features of an edge service is that it's, that it's got a lot of technologies all working together. And there's gonna be a variety of tools involved in this. Uh, so the platform needs to coordinate these tools together and provide a simple and coherent experience and make sure that all the parts of the service are working smoothly. So the last pillar of our uh, system is the community itself. So the edge service enabling platform is meant to operate as a community of component developers, services, uh, service designers, service providers. And uh, if you refer back to the diagram that was shown earlier, you can see how the community of users contributes to the edge services catalog each in their different ways. Um, I believe open source is a great model for approaching this. It's a collaborative effort. The platform supports a community and the platform can also be built, built by a community. Um, and to that end, we've uh, started this um, edge services enabling platform as an Agrino block blueprint. Um, it's just moved into incubation um, and you can check out our, our progress on the public wiki shown here. And if you're interested in joining in, you can contact us. We'd love to hear from you. So finally, I'm going to show you a short video. There's a, a demonstration just to give you a taste of how this platform is supposed to work. Um, the uh, video shows um, 
a service uh, based on the Agrano blueprint that uh, Fukunosan described earlier. Um, so it's got the robots and the RMSM uh, multi-sensor device that he was talking about. And uh, what they do in the, in the demo is say, add on an additional anal analysis function to that, uh, to that uh, service model. Um, there's other aspects of the platform that, are, that I haven't gotten into, like uh, registering new components or adding components to existing service catalogs, deploying services. Um, but I picked this particular example just to highlight the, the four um, pillars that we were describing earlier. So please enjoy the video. <laughs> oh, sound, no sound. <laughs> 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 Here you got your. Yeah, I'm just gonna. Oh, would you like display audio? Get it. Ah, come on, time. Just wait, ne? Yeah, we're missing sound. <laughs> HDMI no audio ga dete kuru. Konai desu ka? Ah. Demo. Are wa tabun nai in janai. Nai na. Ah, iya mo. Ya. Chotto matte kore mo mata tomatte chatta. Let's go be. Oh no. <laughs> Let me just stop this. Try it again. Nope. Uh, but with headphones. <laughs> edge service used at a food plant. The employee will create a new edge service by adding a data analysis and feedback component to the catalog of the robot control edge service they are already using. The side menus on the platform give user tips on what to do. User selects yeah. edit edge service catalogs to edit the edge service catalogs. Here, the platform provides a conceptual diagram from which the user can select the basic configuration and functionality of the Edge Services catalog. Even if you are not an expert, this conceptual diagram provides a clear picture of the requirements and structure of the service. The user selects robotics to search for the catalog of robot control Edge Service that they are using. The platform can automatically extract the required conditions of, for the selected component. When a user searches here, the search results are displayed. The user selects the catalog of robot control edge servers they already have in operation. The platform displays a conceptual diagram of the catalog selected by the user. Users can also switch between modes and add components from conceptual diagrams. The platform anticipates what you want to do. In this demo, the user enters, I want to automate the tuning of food manufacturing robot operations to maintain the quality of manufacturing. The platform customizes suggestions and questions based on user input and asks the user questions. The platform asks the user to confirm, I understand that you want to add a data analysis application for feedback generation for robot control of this edge service. Okay. The platform suggested additional components to add. Adding multiple sensors and more analysis data types will help maintain and improve quality. Do you want to add these components? The platform searches for data analysis applications and multi-sensors based on the user's answer. The platform finds suggested components that are recommended to the user from the search results, creates a list and displays these search results to the user. 
platform displays the search results, including the recommended components. User adds the recommended components. The platform updated the conceptual diagram by adding components selected by the user. The platform also automatically added the necessary additional components for data analysis. The platform offers different levels in the editing mode, depending on your expertise and the type of editing you are doing. In this demonstration, the user selects the component level to see the components making up the surface. The user then saves the catalog as a new edge service catalog. I'm just going to stop it there because we're out of time. Um, whoops. And go on to the next slide. There we go. So one more note. Um, Gnosa and my work has been funded by the uh, Cabinet Office, uh, the Japanese Cabinet Office, uh, and uh, the Cross Ministerial Strategic Innovation Program. Um, and we'd like to thank them for helping us with this work. And thank you for listening to our talks. Uh, this is my introduction to the Edge Service Enabling Platform. I hope it was interesting. Um, and maybe some of you, you will join us in Acreno and uh, work on getting this platform to its full potential. Thank you very much.